Okay, so most cars have a body, chassis and suspension made partly or wholly out of steel. Now, steel exposed to air oxidises and produces ferrous oxide or rust. Usually these parts have a coating. So here's some uncoated steel. Um, now this was lying on my workbench for about the last two or three years. So um, you see on one surface, it's not too bad, hardly any rust. And on the other, there's a fair amount, but this is fairly thick steel. It's about two, maybe two and a half mil thick. So, you know, that's still good solid stick. <clears throat> and of course, the common coatings you get to try and prevent rust are paint. So here's a repair panel, painted repair panel, that again has been in my garage for a good few years. And um, it's only really got uh, rust around the edges that, are, that have been cut. And another common way of preventing rust is galvanisation. So here's a galvanised piece of uh, steel, but you'll notice it does still have flecks of rust. So these coatings are only really a temporary way of preventing the advancement of rust, which is just going to happen anyway over time. Um, the process is accelerated by conditions like the temperature, the humidity and exposure to other compounds like salt, which is why in colder, damper climates, things can rust a lot more quickly. The age of a vehicle is much less relevant to the advancement of rust than the quality of the original design and manufacture of the car and the conditions that it's been exposed to. When discussing rust on cars, I think it's important to say there's a variety of ways in which rust can affect cars and you know there's no one way that it affects um, cars over time it, it can be different parts of the car uh, you know it just already depends on you know the design of the car and what it's been exposed to um, if you've owned an old car you'll probably know uh, this from experience and if you own a classic car or you're interested in buying a classic car it's a really important thing to um, kind of have some familiar familiarity with this topic so Rust on the body panels of a car that's clearly visible might not be in itself a huge issue. However, if there is visible rust, it's probably an indicator that there's more significant problems lurking underneath the vehicle or actually within the structure of the vehicle, um, which could be very expensive to rectify. Um, so, holes and cracks that appear in the chassis, the suspension, seatbelt mounting points, will compromise the safety of a car. Some rust can be purely cosmetic. Um, it's often referred to as surface rust, but that's quite a misleading term because many cars have structures that are susceptible to rusting from the inside out. So now let's look at how a car rusts with the aid of a technical diagram. Most buyer's guides for cars will alert you to specific areas of concern for a particular model. But generally, there are two key areas that usually rust on most cars. Those are the wheel arches, both around the lip and also up inside the wheel arches, and the sills, which is the structure that runs front to back um, either side of the car uh, underneath the doors. So the sills these lower sections and typically um, but not always they will uh, rust worse at the back of the car where the sill meets the wheel arch here in this area um, but the rust will eventually spread to other parts of the car including the whole of the floor pan uh, so even into the center of the car uh, the pillars and the rear and front bulkheads The uh, boot floors can also often rust due to the accumulation of water let in through the uh, either a poor boot seal or um, the rear light clusters. This is where rust has appeared on a car. At some stage it should be remedied. Uh, the decision of what to do and when to do it depends on a lot of factors. Um, in my view the most important factors are where it's occurred and how advanced it is. Uh, though you won't know the true extent of it until you've started to treat or remove it. So rust uh, prevention, treatment and removal can be done in a number of ways. So there's um, 
firstly anti-corrosion inhibitors, uh, which will basically just slow down the rust. Uh, so some sort of underbody wax or sealant. Um, then you've got rust uh, removers or converters. So uh, this is a rust converter product. This is a rust removal product. Um, and basically they both, broadly speaking, uh, do the same thing in terms of chemically uh, getting rid of the rust. Um, it just works in a slightly different way and um, some products are slightly more effective than others. Uh, the next way is um, abrasion. So basically you've got things like a wire brush, a wire brush attachment for a drill, and a flat disc for uh, an angle grinder. Uh, and that's literally just mechanically removing the rust. And then the, so the sort of final way to do it is by actually physically cutting out and um, welding in place uh, new bits of steel. So you might use some tin snip, you might use an angle grinder with a cutting disc, um, and you might also use a uh, MIG welder, which is one of these. So what method to use really depends on how advanced the rust is and where it's located. Um, uh, but as we've already covered, the only real way to properly get rid of it is to cut it out and weld in new pieces. Um, that's because once it's become rusted enough that the uh, mm -hmm. the steel is basically um, weakened, uh, it'll just start to um, start to crumble away. Holes will start to appear, and um, you can even sort of poke holes in in the chassis of a of a car that's really badly rusted with um, a screwdriver or even sometimes your your finger. So um, yeah, once it gets to that stage, uh, there's no real way to revive it. You have to cut it out and replace it, and um, Commonly, once it gets to that stage, it's referred to as rot. Um, however, really small holes, like tiny pinholes, can be um, bridged with a fiberglass filler in non-structural areas. Um, and uh, sometimes small holes can actually be plugged with um, weld without the need for actually cutting a panel to size. Way to learn how to assess and deal with rust on cars is by experience. Even specialists who regularly deal with rust won't be proficient in all types of corrosion on all vehicles and all methods of repair and restoration. That said, experienced professionals who deal with rust repairs or restoration who have inspected your car should be able to advise on the extent of the problem and estimate roughly how much it would cost to rectify. The most difficult part in this process is deciding how much to invest in remedying the rust on a car. Different people take different approaches according to their use of the car and their budget so some people might decide to just deal with issues as they come up, immediate issues, and just keep the car on the road as much as possible. Uh, others might decide to have the whole car stripped and all the rust dealt with. Um, that would typically be this, a significant part of a classic car restoration. Um, and, and some people might, you know, go somewhere in between, you know, um, they might have uh, more extensive repairs done um, over time and uh, maybe sort of use a uh, rust inhibitor liberally around the car to try and slow the progress of rust. So the costs of rust repair. Now, this is going to depend on the approach that's taken to deal with the rust and the extent of the rust. So. These can be anything from, you know, like uh, a few hours labor in a local garage for a, you know, a fairly minor rust repair to hundreds of hours at a restoration specialist. Um, so in the UK, this could mean anything from 50 pounds to 10,000 pounds or more worth of work. The thoroughness of the work done means the repair could last only a year or it could last maybe 15 to 20 years, depending on how the car's been stored and how it's been used. So for example, let's say you have a small hole in the sill of your car, um, about the size of a large coin, um, so UK, UK currency, let's say like a 50p or a you know, two pound coin. So you know, something, something about kind of that sort of size. Wouldn't necessarily look like anything major to start with, but once you've ground away um, a lot of the rust, you may find that this would open up to a slightly bigger hole. So, uh, you know, let's say the size of an apple, you know, something something about this kind of size. Um, we'll assume that the rust doesn't extend to any 
other panels or the inner structure of the vehicle. So to deal with that kind of apple-sized hole in the, in the sill of a car, a patch could be made up and it could be welded on um, relatively inexpensively, but it's still going to need painting, um, and usually a much larger area will need to be painted to blend or repair in uh, to the rest of the paintwork, assuming that's what you want to achieve. So let's say a small independent garage or a body shop might charge anything from £150 to maybe £400 for the work if the, the paintwork is quite extensive. Um, a tiny hole in the floor of a car might only cost 50 quid um, to get repaired. Um, and a significantly rusted sill that needs completely replacing, so that's the outer side of the sill, the inner side of the sill, a full sill replacement, you know, could cost £700, it could cost £1,000, you know, once it's all fully painted up. So the cost really can vary. Um, you can also have rust inhibitors uh, professionally applied to the underside of your car um, and in the wheel arches and the sills and everything. And, you know, that could cost maybe anything from about 300 to about £500 pounds for, a, for a good thorough job. It's hard to say how long, you know, to estimate the longevity of a repair or a treatment because if, if you you know, spending more than a few hundred pounds, you would expect the repair to last for several years, and it should do. Um, a quick, cheap, you know, welded patch might only last a year, but, you know, if you're spending more than a few hundred quid, it should last a few years, and, um, you know, also, if you're spending that kind of money, the people doing the work should be able to provide some kind of guarantee that you know, um, you know, it's not going to rust in in a certain period of time. Um, you can obviously save a lot of money by doing the work yourself because it's a very labour-intensive process, and the actual cost of the rust treatment products and repair panels is is not that much um, compared to the cost of the labour. So. You know, many rust repairs are within the realms of a DIY, um, you know, kind of uh, person trying to trying to save a bit of money. But it does require quite a lot of skill, a lot of these processes. And, um, you know, so basically you wouldn't expect to get anywhere near the quality of, of, of result um, as a professional would be able to. Pretty much what you'd expect. Uh, many people, myself included, have, um, you know, pretty much taught themselves how to weld. Um, perhaps with a little bit of help um, in order to repair or restore their cars. There are different welding processes but by far the most common one to use on cars and the easiest is uh, MIG welding, metal inert gas welding. Um, it's the most versatile, most straightforward. Um, having said all this, you know, you, you can certainly do it yourself but um, extensive rust is very hard to repair on your own uh, without access to the kind of knowledge of the tools um, and the experience of somebody that's done it hundreds of times before. So I hope with some of the information I've already kind of given, um, it should be clear that rust isn't really something to panic about if you've just discovered it on your car. Um, it is something to be mindful of, uh, particularly if you're buying a used car, um, say, about seven years old or older um, or a classic car that hasn't been restored within that kind of time frame. Um, even if a car is relatively new or you're looking at a classic car that you know supposedly has had any rust dealt with, um, you still need to look out for it. To fully inspect uh, a car for rust, it needs to be raised really um, on a ramp for your inspection or photos taken of the underside ideally. Uh, alternatively, uh, if you're able to, get on the floor and inspect along the sills um, and the under underside of the car you know, with a torch. Um, feel for, for rot along the, uh, the seams uh, and look for holes and bubbling in the paintwork. Uh, potentially even ask if you can pull the carpeting back uh, so that you can have a look at the uh, the state of the inner sill and the floor pan of the car. Um, check the strut mounting points. So uh, they're fairly clearly obvious once you lift the bonnet of the car, um, either side of the engine bay, the front strut, strut tops. Uh, that, that's quite a difficult job to do with the engine in situ. It doesn't tend to 
tend to work. So, um, you know, that can be an engine out job. Um, so, yeah, look in all those areas uh, and just look for clues that, you know, might add up to a bigger problem that's lurking on the vehicle. Um, it's entirely possible that even an honest seller might not have discovered rust uh, that's been on their car there for a while. Um, you know, after all, how often do you do that kind of a thorough inspection on your own cars? Um, in the UK, you can also check the uh, the annual MOT test history um, online uh, to determine if the car's had problems with rust in the past um, and any corrosion repairs that have taken place. Um, however, you've got to bear in mind that that only provides a snapshot of the history of the car over a period of time and the failure might be the result of a very, very small um, amount of rust in a potentially dangerous location um, and likewise an advisory for rust might mean um, that there's a much bigger problem there um, and vice versa. So, you know, you, you've got to go on the state of the car as you inspect it, um, you know, if you're looking to buy one before you buy the car rather than anything that's happened in the past, really. Um, so basically, if you want to understand um, how badly affected by rust a car is, you need to gain an overall picture, taking into account all these things in the different areas of the car. Um, of the, so to give you an idea of the health of the steel components that make up the car. Um, and once you've done that, then you can make an informed decision about, about the car. Um, just one final point, um, be wary of cheap rust repairs. So, um, you know, either somebody that's done a repair to your car or, you know, that have been done on a car that you're looking to buy. Um, it is very hard to determine the quality of a repair once it's covered in anti-corrosion wax and filler. Um, and both of those are valid coatings to use in different situations um, over a repaired area. but. Um, basically any repair to a structural part of the car uh, should be fully seam welded all the way around. Um, and the only real way to determine that properly is with actual photographic evidence of the work um, or if you've seen the work done um, because even paint can sort of mask um, uh, sort of clues as to how well uh, you know that work's been done um, so you, you typically get a kind of shroud of um, around the weld um, and that allows you to see, see to some extent um, how well the weld has penetrated on both sides of the panel um, but you know it's very hard to tell once the once the repair has been done um, you can use a magnet to try and uh, sort of check for solid steel you know if, if a magnet doesn't stick to a body panel of a car uh, assuming they're not plastic panels um, then you, you, it should it should indicate that maybe all is not well. Um, but again, you know, um, it's really only something you can really tell with a bit of experience of, of, of rust and rust repairs. Um, even MOT testers have to make a fairly subjective judgment um, based on work that's been carried out and decide whether it meets certain criteria. Um, that said, it is much rarer in modern times to find uh, really bad repairs. People just don't go to the effort of doing bad repairs because sometimes it's more effort um, to do to do it that way than to do the job properly. And you know they're not going to invest that that time in a car that's you know you know not worth that much money anyway. Um, and that's why on you know classic cars you might see repairs um, and historical repairs involving rivets, uh, adhesive. Um, and even things like uh, concrete and uh, chicken wires that kind of build up some sort of structure back where, where rust has uh, eaten away at the car. Um, but it's very unusual to find that kind of repair on a modern car. I wouldn't say it would never happen, but highly unusual. So I hope you have enjoyed my um, uh, exploration of a rust in cars um, and uh, it's a topic that I find uh, quite interesting. I find dealing with rust of cars um, quite satisfying, uh, you know, the work that I can do myself. I don't uh, do all the work myself uh, on cars uh, that involve extensive repairs because as I've covered in the past it's, 
it's not easy to 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 do these kind of extensive repairs to to cars when you don't have the equipment. But uh, yeah, I, I kind of find this topic quite interesting. I find working with steel quite interesting. Um, and yeah, um, perhaps if you if you want any more detail on some of the things that are covered here, let me know. And uh, yeah, I'd be happy to happy to tell you what I can.